Bonjour! Welcome to Natalingo's Nata. You are listening to episode 19. Normally, I start with what has happened in the classroom, but today I would like to change it to what has happened on my bus. My mobile library bus, because earlier this week it was really cold. There was a big frost, hard frost outside. And I went over to get my bus ready for the one uh, class, one school that can actually visit me where it's parked. It's the only school I don't actually move the bus for, because they are just local to me in Leadgate. So I got the bus ready, so they came along, uh, year five class, so this is uh, some nine and ten year olds. It was the first time on the bus, they had a good look around, and then I asked them to sit down on the cushions, I as I always do, and started reading a story to them. Then suddenly, in the corner of my eye, I could see it, a drop water falling on the child. In my head I panicked a little bit (laughs) but tried to remain calm and understand where it was coming from and the teacher had seen it and she said it's fine and then I suddenly saw one at the other end of the bus where the other skylight was Another drop of water falling on another child. And to cut a long story short, what had happened is the um, skylights, the two skylights, were frozen inside. And as the bus had started to warm up and the children were on it, obviously creating a lot of heat, the ice, the sheet of ice inside the bus was just melting and there was nothing I could do about it because I couldn't just wipe it or just, or just keep wiping it. It was a really layer of ice that was melting. Luckily the children had coats because they'd walk along from their school so they put their hoods up. The teacher was very good about it. The children was awfully good about it as well. We had a laugh about it and really, as I said to them, there was only one thing for it. If they didn't want to get wet, they just had to stop breathing and then the ice would stop melting. So that made them laugh. And we had our session 45 minutes on the bus, just as if nothing had happened. So note to self, next time before I welcome a class on the bus, Just make sure the bus is lovely and warm. And if there's been any ice, just check the skylights. Just make sure it has melted so it doesn't melt on children. I've been back and wiped the condensation off (laughs) just to try and minimise the risk of it being ice next time I take it out. So I just wanted to share this funny story with you. And just to say, even when you think you're prepared... Oh, we always be ready for the unpredictable because it will happen with teaching with children, even without a bus. The main part of today's episode I have called Five Years of Telling Stories on My Library Bus. I thought I was indulged a little bit. I'm waiting for suggestions as to what you would like me to uh, talk about, to explore, to share with you. I've got a couple of things planned, but in the meantime, I just wanted to have a recap on the five years of having this amazing seven and a half ton mobile library bus that I visit schools with and on which I tell stories. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit of background as to how it came about and share some highlights with you, if you will allow me and be so kind as to listen. How did it all start? I had so many French books in my house. 
five years ago, my children were 14 and 11, and they'd just about grown out of all the books that they had since being babies. It was limited. The 14-year-old still read in French, but to be honest, the 11-year-old didn't. And they were just taking up so much space in their bedrooms. And I had this mad dream. And the dream was to have a French library. And I started secretly looking for some venue where I could host it, thinking about how I could stuff it, how it could work, where it could be. Oh, I was just trying to find a way to share those stories. I had also used stories quite a lot before, and especially during French days, telling stories to children from nursery to year six. And I remember very vividly being told by a local head teacher that I'd worked with for years how good I was at telling stories, and it had stuck with me, and I, I wanted to share those stories. At the end of a phone call with one of my very best friends... I thought, I've got to tell her. I've got to tell her. So I said about the mad dream about having a library. And she said, well, what you need is a mobile library bus. And that was a light bulb moment. I thought, well, of course, that's what I need. And then from then on, just looked on the internet for people who sold mobile library buses. Went to look at several of them around the country. And my heart was set on the one in Harrogate and we put a deposit down on it in December 2014. It was delivered on the 29th of January 2015 and that was so exciting. I must say by then I'd never driven anything bigger than a small van and I'd just bought this seven and a half ton bus. Luckily, the uh, caretaker where I park it, a prospect business park in Ledgate, used to be a coach driver, so he offered to give me some lessons. So on the weekend on the car park, I would drive it and he would tell me what to look out for, how to use the mirror, how to reverse and all those very useful things that you need to know. I remember thinking, actually, I've bought this bus, I've put things on it once we gutted it out and put all the books in, been to get some more books. I thought, what if I don't even like driving it on the road? (laughs) Now the first drive took place on the 26th, I think, of April 2015. And uh, I was worried about a very sharp bend. And when I mentioned it to my mechanic, he said, I tell you what, I'll come with you. And he sat next to me the very first time I went on the road. I did have to get the bus back to where it's parked myself. And luckily, I loved it. So <laughs> doesn't mean I'd never, I've never got nervous about driving it and parking it. But the best thing he said to me uh, that day was, you've got as much right to be on the road as everybody else. So if I have to manoeuvre, do anything, I just think, I've got the right to be on the road. I'm going to take my time, pretend other people on there and just get on with it in my own time safely. That's what I've been doing and it served me well. You might think its name, Biblia Book, is not quite right. It should be a bibliobus or bookmobile, but all those names are already taken and my son convinced me to call it the Biblia Book. Really, it means book book, but hey, it's a bus. Most people call it the bibliobus and that's fine as well. So some highlights. I'll start with the bad ones. I was uh, due to go to a school not too far from my house one morning and I went to put the engine on and the bus always started first time. Always has done for five years, even though it's 17 years old. But then it came with engine warning, flashing, beeping, wouldn't let me go anywhere. So I tried again. Engine warning. I tried again. Engine warning. So I messaged the lady whose school I was going to. I'm sorry, I called come again. I'm getting this engine warning. Try again. It started and the engine warning disappeared. So I thought, I'm not going far. I'm just going to go for it. 
an off hour end and I got there safely and I got back safely and it turns out it happened a few more times after that I had left the bus standing for a little while it was not happy so it was just saying you know why have you left me for so long giving me a bit of a warning and then once I'd warned it warmed it up and everything was happy with me again forgive me and then the light went off and off we went no bother the worst thing I ever did whilst driving it was going round a roundabout. I clipped the uh, back right wheel over the roundabout ever so slightly and heard this almighty bang. I was about 40 minutes from uh, where I parked the bus and I knew when I got back it was not going to be pretty. And the stuff that just normally doesn't move on the shelves at all. It just like jumped off the shelves and there was about half the books were in the middle of the floor. Some got a little bit damaged, which obviously was a shame, but most of them were okay. It was just a big mess that took me forever to sort out. But luckily it was on the way back, not on the way there. <laughs> So I could take my time sorting it, but I was quite devastated and felt very stupid. I'd been so excited. I'd had such a good day and I got in on the bus, set off, woohoo, and just didn't concentrate as much. And then, and then that happened. I'll see if I can dig out a photo to show you. The latest bad thing that happened was I came back from a local school and uh, I have to check the bus before I set off every day. I do safety checks and I have forms to fill in to say that I've checked everything. So I do do them. And everything had been fine in the morning. And then I check everything when I get in, just like switch things off and have a look around. And I notice that uh, where the generator is for the batteries that give me electricity and heating on the bus that had gone through the floor and it was just hanging off and how it didn't come off on the road. I'll never know, but I was so grateful. I was like, oh, I am so lucky. This is still here. That didn't go, just fall in the middle of the road. And I thought that was the end of the bus at that point. But my amazing mechanic got it sorted, no bother. And I was able to go to Manchester a couple of weeks later and... Um, be safe but that was actually the scariest thing that happened to me with the bus in the five years I've had it. I've been trying to think of the positive things but all I could think was every time a class comes on the bus there are children that are just amazed and I'm getting a bit emotional now just uh, thinking about it every single time. Children that just say things like, this is the best bus ever. I want to live here. I'm in heaven. And it just, it's such a unique learning environment, even before I start telling stories. And then when we start, well, that's something else. It's a, the funniest thing I ever got asked was whether I would swap my bus for somebody's mum. It was a little boy. And he seriously said, can I swap your bus for my mum? So I said, well, I'm not sure, like, if you're wanting to do this, we're not sure about your mum. I said, oh, she's lovely, I just want your bus. <laughs> I did decline. And I must say that if uh, I got a tip, a pound every time, and the one said, are you taking us for a drive? Or asked me if I lived on the bus then I would be very rich indeed. It's so cute. Such a magical experience for children and adults. And me. if you've listened this far, then I'm about to tell you something that I have not made public yet, but I'm getting emotional because it's actually time to say au revoir to the bus. It's been an amazing five years, but... I've got to let it go. If you've been lucky enough to have come on, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much for enabling me to have 
the past amazing five years. If you have another chance to come on, well, you never know. One day I might be rich or somebody rich might find out about what I did with this bus and just buy me a new one and subsidize my work and I'll be able to be on the road again but there's still but as things stand I've just gotta empty it all out and let it go but I'm so grateful for the times that Ralph as he's called and me have had it's been amazing au revoir bibliobook It is now time for your nugget of French learning and today's tip on how to sound more French for you and your children to listen to. Enjoy! Today, I want to focus on how we make a sh sound in French. And there are two things you need to know. The first one is that if you hear a sh sound in a French word, then the chances are 99% of the time it will be spelled C-H. There are always exceptions. So the other thing you need to know is that if you are trying to pronounce French and sound really French, when you say out loud a word that has a C and an H in it, you don't make a CH sound, you read it as a SH. And I'll make you sound so French. Obviously you knew this already. How did you know this already? How do I know that you knew it already? Right, let me tell you a sentence in English. Charlotte had some quiche made by the best chef in town. That's a bit of a random sentence, isn't it? Yes, it is. But the point of it is, you've got the name Charlotte. Charlotte. There's a CH that sounds like a sh. You've got the word quiche. There's another CH. Quiche, another French word. That's why it looks so different from a lot of English word Q U I C H E quiche and then you've got the word chef somebody who makes food C H E F chef three words of French origin in there with C H in them that sounds sh- even in English the C you knew it didn't you easy peasy you'll never forget that if you see a ch in French that makes a sh sound and if you hear a sh sound in French you know to transcribe it as ch just a silly little thing to finish off another sentence with Charlotte and quiche in French Charlotte est une quiche <laughs> it's a bit of a silly one to say that Charlotte is a bit silly and being a bit silly and being a bit stupid. She's not thinking about something properly and just says something silly. You might say, Charlotte, it's in quiche. Charlotte is a quiche. Okay, it's not a very nice thing, but it's not offensive either. I just thought I would say it just so you don't forget that CH that makes a sure sound in French and you will sound so French. Thanks a lot for listening. Au revoir. This was episode 19 of Natalie Goes Natter with Natalie Paris. I would love some feedback as ever. Please message me. Let me know what you think of the podcast, what you'd like me to talk about, to share with you. Any feedback would be hugely appreciated. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to subscribe, you can do so wherever you found this podcast. I'll just make sure that... uh, you keep listening or go back to previous podcasts if this is your first one and find out what it's all about. Thanks a lot. Merci. Au revoir.